I did want to tell you a little bit about myself, and that is, is that I have been an entrepreneur my entire life. Um, I started a man handyman business in Albuquerque in 1974, me, and actually grew that business to employ over a thousand people. Thank you. I, can't, I, can't. I sold that business in 1999. Nobody lost their job, and they're doing better than ever. I had never been involved in politics prior to running for governor of New Mexico. Complete outsider. I went and I introduced myself to the Republican Party a couple of weeks before I announced. And what they said was, we like you, we like what you've got to say, we're going to include you in all the debates and all the discussions. But you just need to know that you will never get elected. That it's not possible to come from completely outside of politics and get elected governor in a state that's two to one Democrat. Well, I got elected. And, and I'd like to think it was based on what I had to say, which was, how about let's run state government like a business? Common sense, best product, best service, lowest price. Let's just bring some common sense to all this. And so I distinguish myself as governor of New Mexico, I think, in many categories. But one of them was, I may have vetoed more legislation as governor of New Mexico than the other 49 governors in the country combined. I vetoed 750 bills while I was governor of New Mexico. I had thousands of line item vetoes as governor of New Mexico. Only two were overturned, so it made a difference when it came to billions of dollars worth of spending. It made a difference when it came to government passing laws that in my opinion were just gonna add time and money to our lives and weren't gonna make us any safer, weren't gonna make us any more healthy, it was just going to be a burden. And I stood up to that and I vetoed that legislation. Now you gotta know that the sky was gonna fall, that the earth was gonna end, there were gonna be dying people in the streets, children were gonna go hungry. Well, of course, none of that happened. And the ultimate arbiter of how all those vetoes worked out were the citizens of New Mexico, where in a state that was two to one Democrat, I got reelected by a bigger margin the second time than the first time. I want you all to know that I am a Dr. Paul fan. Ron Paul asked me for my endorsement in 2008. I readily gave that endorsement. When I dropped out of the Republican primary, I asked everyone that was going to vote for me to vote for Ron Paul. When asked in the last debate that I got to appear in, who would you pair up with as a vice presidential candidate, I chose Ron Paul. There wasn't any other choice other than Ron Paul. And I want to make this really clear. If I thought Ron Paul was going to get the nomination, I would not be standing here before you today as the Libertarian Party candidate for president. I would have not done this. I would have let Ron Paul get the nomination, and I would be along with you supporting Dr. Paul right now. But this is an exclusionary process, and each and every one of you know it. This is, this is absolutely exclusionary. 
you've had the sand kicked in your face and you continue to have the sand kicked in your face and you keep coming and we all keep coming because this is really an important message. And it's about the message. And Dr. Paul is the first one that will talk about the message. And the message is, look, let's stop the spending. Let's end the wars. Let's abide by the Constitution of the United States. There is a growing police state in this country. Let's stop this growing police state in this country. Now going forward, it's really important to recognize that there are other third party candidates, okay? It's not just the Libertarian Party. But the Libertarian Party is going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. And there are only going to be three candidates on the ballot in all 50 states. And this is really important to recognize. So when you talk about the three candidates that are going to be on the in the, in the general election come the fall, there are some really, really important distinctions here between the three. Uh, not yet. Let's wait the Libertarian candidate for president is going to distinguish him or herself from the other two candidates. Right now, that candidate happens to be me, okay? And I recognize, I recognize that each and every one of you would be doing what I'm doing right now if given the opportunity but I've been given this opportunity and I'm trying to make the most out of it. So in the general election, I'm going to talk about three candidates because only three candidates are going to be on the ballot in all 50 states. But I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to stop foreign aid where we have poor people in this country giving foreign aid to rich people in other countries. want to bomb Iran. I'm going to be the only candidate who wants to get out of Afghanistan now. Bring the troops home. Stop our military interventions. I am outraged, outraged by politicians that beat their chests against the terrorist threat and that comes at a cost of tens of thousands of innocent people being killed in foreign countries and it results in our men and service women coming back in body bags or with their limbs blown off. This has to stop and it has to stop now. to repeal the Patriot Act, and I would have never voted for it in the first place. I would never have signed the National Defense Authorization Act allowing for you and I, as U.S. citizens, to be arrested, detained, without being charged. This is why we fought wars. I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to end the drug wars. Legalize marijuana now. I'm going to be the only candidate talking about marriage equality from the standpoint of it being a constitutionally guaranteed right on par with civil rights of the 60s. that's going to be talking about balancing the federal budget now. Now! If we don't balance the federal budget now, we're going to find ourselves in a monetary collapse. And a monetary collapse, very simply, is when the dollars that we have in our pocket don't buy a thing because of the accompanying inflation that is going to go along with that. And that means addressing the entitlements. 
Right now you've got Republicans and Democrats saying they're going to spend more on Medicare than the other party. We have to reform Medicare. We have to spend less money on Medicare. We have to spend less money on the military. I'm going to be proposing 43% reductions in those categories because if we don't do it, we're going to find ourselves without a country. Country. Both parties have their hands out to sell loophole, and guess what? Individuals, groups, corporations are buying those loopholes. I'm going to be the only candidate that wants to abolish the IRS, eliminate. tax. I am embracing the fair tax. I really think it's the template to zero taxes. I am the only candidate that would sign legislation to abolish the Federal Reserve. It's a rigged game. It's a rigged game. The Federal Reserve gives money to the banks for zero percent. The Fed loans money, gives money to the banks. The banks buy treasuries profiting off you and I with no risk whatsoever. This is not what this country is about. I'm the only candidate that would, that would repeal legal tender laws and sign legislation allowing for competing currencies. Is this a message that belongs in the presidential debates? 15% voter support puts liberty front and center in the debates and in the headlines. I have two words for Ron Paul. Thank you. Thank you for taking the cause of liberty to the American people in a way that none of us have seen in our lifetimes. I know, but it's not, it's not working. I'm going to ask you something here. Be libertarian with me for one election. One election. Together, we'll show the world and the nation that what Ron Paul has stood for is not a fluke, it's the future. Woo!